Okay, let's go ahead and continue working with making selections. We're going to work with a quick selection document, also located in your Chapter 2 folder. And here we have a flamingo. Our goal is to remove the flamingo from its background. In this exercise, we're going to use the quick selection tool. If you still have your same tool panel set up from the previous exercise, you're probably seeing the magic wand tool instead of the quick selection tool. So you would just need to click on the magic wand tool and hold it and then choose quick selection. You notice the option panel changes for this tool and the first icon on the options panel is a picture of our tool. Here you'll notice that the icons for adding and subtracting from your selection have changed quite a bit from that of the magic wand. Remember the magic wand is a very old tool in Photoshop and this one here, the quick selection tool, is much more recent. So in this case, we have the plus sign and the minus sign on the picture of the tool to indicate add to selection and subtract from selection. The quick selection tool is similar to the magic wand in that it does also use tone and color when making its selection, but it also considers texture. And instead of having a magic wand, we're actually using a, what looks like a brush. On our options panel, you'll see that there is a drop down menu where you can actually change the size and hardness and spacing of your brush. So it's similar with working with the brush tool, which we'll do later. But here you can see I can change the diameter of the brush. Let me go ahead and set this at 70. And when I come over my flamingo, when I click, you'll see a little crosshair. It starts to create a selection. Now the selection is created based on the diameter of the brush. So if we work too close to the edge of the flamingo, you may actually wind up selecting outside of the flamingo and maybe get the rocks and then the selection will kind of go haywire on you. Let me go ahead and get my zoom tool again. I hit the letter Z on my keyboard. I'm going to zoom in so I can see my flamingo just a little better. And then I'm going to return back to my quick selection tool. You'll notice I'm holding it so I can see my quick key, which is a W, to return back to that. So I can use Z to get to my zoom tool and I can use the W to return back to the previous tool which is the quick selection tool. Okay, so I'm going to continue making this selection and I'm just clicking. Now I can click and drag which is quicker but it's also a little bit more dangerous because it can very easily go outside of the range of where you're dragging. So I'm going to follow. See, there we go. We saw where it goes beyond his neck and goes into the rocks. By default, the quick selection tool automatically is working in the plus mode, the add selection mode. As you can see on the options panel, it has automatically changed where it's the quick selection tool with the plus sign. So that means I could click on the quick selection tool with the minus sign on my options panel to begin removing part of my selection, or I can simply hold my alt key or option key on the Mac like I did before when I was working with adding and subtracting selections with my magic wand. So I'm going to press my alt key. We now see a minus sign. And I'm going to come inside the rocks here behind his neck and I'm going to click to remove part of my selection. I'm going to go back up on his neck and continue around. I went back into the rocks, hold my Alt key, and I can remove part of my selection. Now keep in mind you can switch between tools. I know earlier we used the lasso tool where we made our selection with magnetic lasso and we went back and cleaned up our selection using the polygonal lasso. We can switch between selection tools to clean up our selection. So we don't have to use one tool the whole time and stay within that tool grouping. We can actually jump between tools. So I'm going to continue over here and try and get the rest of my flamingo. Now the brush size, this number 70 is actually working pretty well. If I wanted to change the size of my brush, I could go back up on my options panel, choose the drop down menu, and click and drag on my slider to adjust the size of my brush. But you'll notice that when you're doing it, you don't really see the size at all. You just see numbers. And numbers aren't always useful to see what the appearance of the brush would be in relationship to what you're working on. So another option is on your keyboard. You've got your left square bracket and your right square bracket. The left square bracket will make your brush size smaller and the right bracket will make it larger. So that's a lot quicker than having to go up to your options panel and work on a slider or type in a number, especially when you're not familiar with the sizes. 
This way I can make mine smaller for the area that I'm working in and I can actually hover my brush over the area where I'm working and I can see whether or not it fits. Remember with this tool, when you're working with it, you want to be careful not to go outside the edges. I'm going to use all to get inside this little area within the feathers. You don't want to go too large because you don't want to go outside of the range where you're selecting. Because again, this tool is making a selection based on color, tone, and texture. And if part of your brush is outside the edge of your selection area, or your intended selection area, it's going to include that area in your selection. So it'd be very easy to get the rocks. I'm going to scroll down just a little bit, and I'm going to add his leg. And there we go. We quickly selected the flamingo. And let me go ahead and get my zoom tool again. Again, if I hold my Alt key, Option key on the Mac, that will let me zoom out. The plus sign is automatic on your zoom tool. If I was in the minus mode, I would hold my Shift key to get the plus sign. Now remember, we've got the flamingo selected, not the background, and we want to remove the background, not the flamingo. So we would actually have to do an inverse at this point. Now, also with selections, we could copy selections, we can paste selections, and we can delete selections. We've been deleting. So let's go ahead and copy this. Let's choose on our menu bar at the top, let's choose Edit, and let's select Copy. And let's make a new document really quick. File, New. Let's name this Flamingo. And you'll notice the preset is based on the size of the clipboard. Our clipboard is what we just copied. So that's what is in memory, and that's called our clipboard. So our size is being created on the size of our Flamingo or our selection. So I'm going to click OK, and then I'm going to choose Edit, Paste. And now we've brought our selection of our Flamingo into a new document titled Flamingo. You'll notice on our Layers panel, it made a new layer automatically called Layer 1, and our background layer is separate, and we can actually hide that by clicking on the Layer Visibility icon, the eyeball, and you can see we have a transparent background on our Flamingo. Let me go ahead and zoom in, and you can see that we actually did a pretty good job with this selection.